question though. Um, I want to thank y'all again. I want to ask this question to the representative. I've been hearing the rumors that you was going to run for mayor. Yeah, I have been hearing those rumors. You have been hearing those rumors? So what about that? What about how do, do you ever see yourself as being the mayor of Meridian, Mississippi? Eddie, I, I've never, truly I've never thought about it. You hadn't thought and about I've it. And I have had some people that have stopped me and talked to me about it. Uh, <coughs> some people have, have talked seriously. Uh, and you know, that's something I just haven't considered at this time. I don't know what to say next. Is you say you ain't considered it? What was that dice man saying something? Or what is the dice? Did you have a question to ask him? Uh, it's some more people in the chat that's uh got a questions. Uh, got a few questions. Let me see here. Uh, one says, "What does rep representative think of his supervisor, council person in his district?" And who are they? Okay, um, my supervisor is uh, Joe Norwood, uh, and I'm Joe's uh, legislature. Uh, my council person is uh, Weston Linderman, uh, but if I'm not mistaken, I am his legislator also. Uh, since redistricting, he is a part of uh, my district also. So uh, I normally don't comment on uh, other political positions, uh, active positions. Uh, Lindemann got elected by the people, and uh, he's currently serving uh, our ward. I think he's brought uh, quite a bit of knowledge and quite a bit of attention uh, to the actions and responsibilities of the council and the mayor uh, with Supervisor Norwood. Uh, he's been a part of the county, if I'm not mistaken, for about 16 years now. Uh, and uh, if you look, he has a district that is unlike any of the other supervisor's district. And when you start looking at 20th Street and 35th Avenue and uh, Obi Clark Drive, you see a lot of paved streets in the city as a result of him having the majority of his district in, in the, city. the city. So I guess, you know, you could, you'll, you'll turn that around and say, well, why aren't some of the supervisors with areas in the counties paving their roads in the counties? Well, again, I think that's a question that you have to ask uh, to the supervisor and to their uh, constituency. So, um, but I, I'd be more than happy to ask, answer any questions, you know, regarding the state, uh, regarding, you know, how we're able to get things done with the state. Um, you know, we're able to get monies in for uh, assisting with the beautification of 22nd uh, Avenue coming into town because you know, it's, it's um, hard to say, but when you take 22nd Avenue and come into Meridian, it doesn't look like an entrance point right. for a city that's as distinguished as Meridian. And we need, we need to do some things there. Um, we're happy to assist to help get the Children's Museum on point. Uh, I think the more activities that we have, the more tourism we're going to be able to attract, the more jobs that we're going to be able to create and keep. Uh, the arts and entertainment experience, you know, is bringing people in from all around the world. And when those people come in, you know, they stop, they eat, they buy gas, they sleep. So, like I said, we have an opportunity to create additional tax revenues here. And uh, I think that's one of the things that we can do in order to keep local taxes down. You know, one of the things I was hearing was was uh, about a tax increase uh, this year. I'm glad that the city council, you know, uh, voted down that tax increase and, you know, uh, whatever areas of creativity they needed to come up with, uh, they were able to come up with to see about trying to uh, get the administrative and the executive branches to agree with them that uh, we would be able to work within 
the means that they had established without increasing a tax. Now, I'm not opposed to a tax. If there's a need there, if we got to have it in order to do, then I think we need to do it. Well, I got to ask you some questions. Uh, one of the things that I, I understand about the arts and entertainment and the things that they're bringing here, but that, that, that business is losing money every month. It has not seen a profit yet, and I don't think it ever will. Uh, I think bringing new things here, uh, again, we'll lose money. We're enriching people that's the the people that's gonna like structure steel that's gonna put up the structure. Or uh, the same people keep doing the building, the same engineers keep making money, keep benefiting while the city's declining. Uh, Meridian has a hell of a history and they need to embrace that, such as um maybe rebuilding the uh, Carnegie Library, rebuilding the Cofo building. Uh uh, getting up out of the, a lot of their county courthouse, you know, that's the place of the first race ride in the United States, the Meridian ride in 1871. Um, that would bring uh, tourism, tourism here if they could see where the uh, civil rights workers uh, live and stay at. Some of the houses are still here. Ms. Pilot Hopper house has been torn down. These are things. If you were mayor, is this something that you would do or consider doing? If you were mayor, would you consider having a lady police chief? If you were mayor, would I, I see already that you understand that you got to have checks and balances. If you were mayor, would we have something that would be more equitable to represent us? I mean, Percy does that, but I mean, Mayor Bland, he does that, but he doesn't have the most stellar people in these positions. Uh, I, I think that we can still find more talented people. That, uh, I, and I definitely, I'm not saying be a radical. I'm just asking, would you embrace Meridian's history, Meridian's past, as opposed to trying to bury it? And that's what they've been doing. And that's what's hurting this state. They're doing that all over, everywhere they're doing that. It's just a minuscule of how it is done elsewhere. But like in Birmingham, they're embracing their bloody past. They rebuilt that church where it was blew up, where the four little girls was killed. They got them out there. And, and they get a lot of tourism there. I, I mostly on weekends, I barely see that building. It's losing money every month. But we could if we embrace Meridian's past. Is that something that you would do? Well, or consider. Uh, first of all, again, I'm going to uh, state for the record, uh, I have not considered running for mayor. And secondly of all, with regard to, you know, the business community, I think we do need to offer uh, developmental opportunities in all portions of Meridian. Uh, tourism here in the state of Mississippi generates a 12 plus to one dollar return. For every dollar that we put in, we normally get 12 plus dollars back in return. So I think that's a very solid investment. But on a state level, we didn't talk about on a local level, we got to clean up our house first. I agree 100%. You know, it's a well known, documented fact that it's extremely difficult to do business with whatever we call the permit division here, you know, with the inspectors and everything. Oh, I already know. I, I had that problem. So uh, most of the people that you talk to, you know, share the same uh, concerns there. And if we have, you know, such significant and monumental areas of concerns in a particular area that's, you know, going to be uh, a plus or a significant minus to, you know, revenue that we generate here, I, I think it deserves, I think it warrants, you know, concerns. Well, I, I appreciate you um, coming in today, and I appreciate you stopping by talking to the people and letting them know what it is that you've done, uh, what it is you're doing. And, and folks, he's not... Again, for the record, he says he's not going to run for mayor. Well, I am. For the record, I am. I'm going to run. You really want me to run? You, you talk about radical. I'm going to just turn the damn tables over. Uh, do, uh, but uh, uh, it, I think that if you did run, I think that you would get a current administration <laughs> worry. I just put it like that. I think you would have a lot of support that if you did run. We, we, we just, well, thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. Well, we, we, I just want to take this opportunity. I'll just say we thank your family. You know, family's been always been like stellar in the community, We've always done things. You, your father, your grandparents, or your sisters, a judge, you know, your family just 
really been pillars in this community in, in the state of Mississippi and want to thank you and your family for that. You know, my mom died and there was a lot of people there and, and I appreciate all the gifts, flowers and everything. That's the reason why I'm taking this opportunity to thank you now okay. while you living as opposed to like when mom died. I know when you die, when I die, y'all better have way more flowers than that. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, you know, um, we know I'm going to give 20, 30, or 40 scholarships a year uh, here in the community. We support you know, Meridian High. We, we said we say who we is because we don't want them to think that it's the state. When you talk about the young, uh, right? I'm talking talking about the young children. Yeah, uh, the young my brother, families, yeah. my sister, and I. Uh, you know, we contribute to uh, MCC uh, annually. We support the Martin Luther King uh, program with uh, a variety of scholarships. There, we support uh, the Cosmetology Center. Uh, we support Meridian High scholarships with scholarships annually um, through our, our church, Newell Chapel CME Ch Church. Uh, we support scholarships through my mother's church, St. John Baptist Church in East End. We provide multiple scholarships there uh, annually. Uh, we support uh, the Freedom Project. We support the area Head Start centers. We support uh, Meridian Public Schools. We support the athletic programs uh, here in the Meridian Public Schools. So we try to make certain that we give back to the community annually. Uh, it, it's not just a one-time thing. Every year, you know, we sit down and we talk about uh, programs. We talk about new programs. We talk about uh, existing programs, you know, that are, are, are taking place. I, I call them perpetual programs because school system's not going anywhere. You know, these churches aren't going anywhere. The community college isn't going anywhere. And they're needed programs. You know, we put in a computer center uh, in the Head Start centers here. And uh, we try to do the same thing with needed programs in other school systems. So we are a firm believer that education, you know, is the key. It, it it supersedes any and all hurdles, race, That's poverty, right. culture. You know, if you can get a good education, you can break those shackles. That's right. Yes, sir. I, I mean, I advocate education because it does transcend everything. And people remember that it's only one vote and stop being bamboozled by your representative. If you can ask your representative about all the different monies that he just talked about, $6 billion to start Medicaid, they, the state of Mississippi pay That's out. right. Six billion. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. What percentage of that money goes toward the minority offices or businesses? Well, Eddie, you know, I participated in a hearing uh, a little bit over a month ago where we depart called the Department of Medicaid in, and we asked them that question, and uh, you know, they wouldn't give us an answer. And then we asked them, well, how many uh, minority businesses do you know of uh, in the state of Mississippi that are affected by? this six billion dollars they couldn't give us an answer there uh, but you know it's my belief that that number is less than one percent I don't think that's good people I think it should be a lot higher than that but here the thing of if they don't have if we don't have black businesses for them to pay that money to then again I kind of understand so we again it falls back on education 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 and leadership I want to thank you, Representative Young. Always a pleasure again. And, uh, you know we're going to be having you back. Would you get, t tell them something to inspire them to go out and vote. We have an opportunity to move the pendulum. We have an opportunity to make a difference. If you believe your vote doesn't count, then this is your opportunity to prove you wrong and to prove everybody else wrong. All it takes is a minute. All you have to do is just fill in a circle and slide it through the machine and then you can be a part of a positive change. Well, I want to thank you for those comments, people, and I agree with you, and I want to thank you again. Now, to mention Weston Linderman will be here too, so, so you'll be able to ask him or talk to him and call him in or whatever you want to say because he will be my guest Tuesday, and next Thursday will be Wayne Davis. Thank you again for listening, people. Play me on music on the way out. Thanks, man.